The joy of the Lord is my strength. Do you understand what joy is? Have you ever found it in your own life? It's the most incredible subject, and I want to share some thoughts with you this morning about joy. You know, often I stand in a pulpit because I don't have my own church, and I look at people's faces. It is fascinating. I wish you could be there with me. You would be amazed to see what I see. And do remember this, that if you have a priest or a minister who's at all observant, it is incredible what you can see from a pulpit. You see everything with a little observation. In Jesus Focus Ministry, you see, we're a ministry of home Bible study groups, so I don't have a Sunday service. We do have a Friday evening service, a sort of in-gathering of people from our Bible studies. Uh, it's not quite the same. It's a little looser in format, but an awful lot of joy is there. Now, I want to talk to you about joy this morning because I really think it's something we've lost in the Church of Jesus Christ. And I don't think Jesus wanted us to. I think it was a very vital part of his life. And I don't think the artists have done very well on this. Usually when I see pictures of Jesus, he looks serious or sad. And I don't believe that's the way he was. Now think about it for a moment. Think about the Christian people you know. And think about the ones who really exude joy. And then think of what joy is. It's much more than happiness, you know. It's not a sort of toothy grin. It is something that's very deep. And it comes from our beliefs. And it's deep within inside us. And in some ways it's indescribable. Maybe I can put it like this. You see, once you've said it's indescribable, you then try to describe it. Uh, think about this. Maybe you've had a rather bad night and you're just going to go to work and you're not feeling very joyful. Well, joy is something that the Lord your God gives you. And it's deep within you. It's deep within your middle somewhere. I can't tell you in the anatomy exactly where it is. But when it's released, it seems to bubble up almost from the depth of the stomach. Almost a hilarity. You just want to laugh. And sometimes we do. Notice first of all, will you, that Jesus had joy. Jesus had joy. Will you say, Richard, how do we know that? Well, first of all, because his joy is spoken about in the Bible. And it's spoken about at a most incredible time. The writer to the book of Hebrews says that when Jesus died, he had joy. Think about this. It says in verse 2 of that chapter 12, Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now what is the writer saying to us? Well, it always seems amazing to me. When Jesus faced the cross, he doesn't talk about death, he doesn't talk about crucifixion, he talks about joy. Why? Because for all the suffering he went through, his eyes were on his heavenly Father. His eyes were on his return to heaven. And because he looked beyond the cross, and because he looked beyond the trials, and because he looked beyond the grave, he saw nothing but joy. I think that says something to us about our lives, as it does about Jesus. We really need to be very careful where we place our thinking, where we place our eyes, where we're really looking in life. For there is joy available for all of us, whatever's happening in our lives at this moment. Secondly, with Jesus, notice, will you, that he asked the Father to fill us with his joy. Yes, you and me. In John chapter 17, Jesus prayed for us in the most magnificent prayer. I often believe it's the prayer of Scripture. The whole chapter is Jesus' prayer. And at the end of verse 13, he prays, so that they may be full of joy. 
that my joy may be within them. My joy within them. That last night before Jesus died, he knelt down and he prayed for you, and he prayed for me, and he said, Father, I want Richard filled with my joy. Well, what's my experience? Sometimes I am, and sometimes I don't feel I am. And sometimes that joy isn't evidenced. So I've got to find out where it originates. But Jesus prayed that we would be full of joy. And I have a feeling that within the church of Jesus Christ, we've missed this. And I think it's sad. For true joy of the Lord is most attractive to other people. It really draws them. The third thing I find about Jesus, which tells me he had joy, is that there were always little children somewhere near. If he needed an illustration, there was always a paddy on about. You say, who are paddy ons? Oh, they're three or four year olds. Have you ever seen them? They're fascinating people. They never walk. They always run. And they hung around Jesus because he was so happy. But it wasn't just happiness. It was the joy within him. Secondly, I want to say this. Joy is internal. Joy is internal. I want you to understand it. It is not dependent on the external circumstances of life. That's why you can have joy right now. You say, Richard, if you knew what I was going through, my job isn't really happy. It's not even secure. The money isn't enough. The cost of living is rising. Just a minute. Whoever told you that life is totally dependent on material things? Of course we need material things to live. But remember, God also said he would supply our needs. He never said he'd supply our luxuries. And we do have luxuries in this country, don't we? Hasn't the Lord been good to us? Doesn't he give us so much? And don't we expect more and more all the time? This materialism has such a grip on us. Oh, I can't possibly do without that. I remember when we first came to this country, my wife said to me, Richard, I'd never want a dishwasher. You know why. I was it. And now, uh, yes, we do need a dishwasher, dear. Hallelujah. I'm let off the hook. But it's luxury, isn't it? Now, joy is not dependent on the outward. We have a friend in our ministry who right now is going through a most difficult time. An older lady. Her husband is very sick. He's had a series of little strokes. She's having problems at home. Her finances are almost nil. And in the middle of this, she had a fence round her property. Part of it fell down. You know what happened, don't you? A silly child across the road climbed on that fence and was hurt. You know the next part? Yes, she was sued. Isn't it fascinating? Don't strange things happen in this world. And so the poor soul doesn't only have the burden of her husband, she doesn't only have the burden of the finances, but she has a suit against her because the child wasn't where it should have been. But she still has joy. She still has joy in the Lord. I love that. I see the strength of the Lord there. And some of us depend so much on circumstances. We base our thinking on circumstances, and that's not truly life. Also, Joy is dependent on my relationship with Jesus Christ. Now that's true for all of us. If you have a deep relationship with Jesus, you will begin to experience joy. For he's told us that the Holy Spirit within us produces joy as a fruit in our lives. If you remember, the fruit of the Holy Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience. Yes, joy is part of the work of the Spirit. And if you're open to Jesus, if your life is depending on Him, then you will find that joy begins to come. It's not us who produces it. It is Him within us. It's the Holy Spirit at work. And it's very, very real. Also, I believe this. I believe that joy shows contentment in God. We trust Him. We know who He is. 
we have peace with him through our Lord Jesus Christ. And because of all this, joy becomes a reality for us. Yes, forgiveness of sin is involved. I know my sins are forgiven in Jesus Christ. But that contentment is quite wonderful. And it comes from trust. I know my God. I don't know my future. But I do know the one who holds my future in his loving hands. And I trust him implicitly. Isn't that great? And when I have a trust like that, the joy just begins to bubble up. Of course, it remains a mystery in the Lord our God, and I don't fully understand it. There's something else. If you're a negative person, the probability is you do not experience the joy of the Lord. For negativity is really the opposite of our God. God is so positive, and some of his people haven't found it. Let the joy of the Lord bubble through you. Jesus wants his joy in you, obviously, by the work of the Holy Spirit. And whatever's happening to you right now, there is a joy available for you. But as I understand it, only in Jesus Christ. If you seek it in the world, if you seek it through worldly pleasures, you will not have joy. If you seek it through materialism, you will not have joy. In our ministry, we have a very dear widow who had a horrendous experience. Her husband was the pilot of a small private plane, and he crashed, killing two other children and two of his own. I was part of that funeral. I'll never forget it. Three caskets. Oh, what a scene. The following Friday evening, this widow was in our service, and she shared with the whole congregation the goodness of the Lord. Yes, she had joy. No, she wasn't happy that she had lost her husband. But she had that deep joy that came from the deep peace in God. In spite of the loss of three, children, three family members, husband and two children, she still had the joy of the Lord. That is deep joy. You see, joy is the reflection of the Lord Jesus Christ in us. So if you're having that real walk with him, if you're really depending on him, if your faith and trust is in him, then you can reflect joy in your life day by day. This lady did. I've seen it in the lives of many. And it's so great to be with a group of people who have found the joy of the Lord is their strength. It's something very real. It's something very practical every day of their lives. 